Our next guest is Dr. Hanan Ali Busetta, a PhD in nanomedicine and drug delivery systems from the School of Pharmacy, which is part of University College London uh, now, and she's currently a lecturer in Birmingham University. Thank you. Thanks for a generous introduction and nice to be here today. Thanks for the invite as well. I hope I can keep you uh, awake. It's the last talk, so it's a challenge for me um, today. So I'm going to talk to you about something different. I'm going to talk to you about exploring um, the nano world, but in medicine. So we're not, I'm not an engineer, so we're going to look at it from a medicine perspective. So we're going to talk about the nano world. What's the nano world? What do we hear about um, when we hear the term nano? I'm going to introduce you to the field of my research, which is nanomedicine and drug delivery. And then we're going to talk about some drug delivery system and why actually we want to explore those nanomaterials in medicine. So the nano world. So what is actually nano? So nano, nanometers. Anybody knows what nano is? For the engineers in the audience. So that's one billionth, so nanometer is one billionth of a meter, or 10 to the minus 9 of a meter. So that's something very, very small. You can't potentially see it by the naked eye. However, in every kind of um, everyday life, we hear the word nano. Where do you actually hear the word nano? Do you, anything in particular that comes with the word nano in mind? Yeah, nanotechnology. So we've got iPad nano, and you have the word nano in it. We also, um, when you hear the word nano, we talk about um, um, science fiction movies, so Fantastic Voyage, and I would recommend people to look at that. That's when they try to um, engineer some kind of uh, um, um, vectors to go and cure something in the body. So that's a kind of science fiction movie. And you, uh, guess what? There is also a car that's called Tata Nano. However, these are not really in the nano scale. They are actually larger. You can see them. They're bigger. So when we're talking about nano in the nanotechnology world, we're talking about things in the nanometer. So if you think, take DNA for instance, it's about which is our genetic material. That's about two, um, 2.5 nanometer. So if you compare it to bacteria, bacteria is about 2.5 micrometer, while a large raindrop is about 2.5 millimeter. So you can actually see it by the naked eye. We take another example that probably some engineers here would know about. These are single walled carbon nanotubes. They are usually used as um, um, electrical conductors. Um, and these, if you think about them, they are um, single walled carbon nanotubes. They are about one nanometer in diameter. They're actually about um, 100 times thinner than actually human hair. So if you think that human hair is thin, there's actually things that are thinner than that. So that's actually the nano in terms of nanotechnology and in its proper um, meaning. So now we go into nanomedicine. So what's nanomedicine? It's actually where my, why I got my title is trying to explore nano, the nano world in medicine. So there are a lot of publication, a lot of work is actually being done in nanomedicine. Um, it's the medical application of nanotechnology. It's trying, what we're trying to do is trying to engineer basically um, and apply some nanoscale based material um, to, um, and then um, use their properties to actually achieve best patient intervention. In other words, we are exploring the nanomaterials that in medicine rather than engineering. However, when we talk about nanomedicine, we can't really not talk about drug delivery. So drug delivery as a term, what I'm trying to do today with you is kind of try to deconstruct that term. What does it really mean for non-pharmacists or non-people who are not working in drug delivery in particular? So we'll, let's take the two words separate. So if we start with delivery, so I've got here some pictures for you. So, um, and I'm trying to see if you can spot up what is common between those pictures. So we've got, we got pizza, food, we've got a baby, we've got a parcel. Anything kind of common in there? Huh? Something coming out of it? Something, anything else? Hmm? A messenger? Yeah, yeah. We're, huh? Protecting, yes. So we also talk about, if you think, it's all about delivering something. So we're delivering a pizza in this case, we're delivering a baby in this case, and we're delivering a parcel. So we're also talking about time when we're talking about delivery. So we've got standard delivery, we've got next day delivery, or nine month delivery in case of a baby. So in terms of delivery in general, it's actually what we, a specific material um, for this, in this case, food or a parcel, is actually transported and delivered to you in that case as a recipient or to your home um, at a specific time. So there is a packaging that's either used to protect 
something or to deliver. There is a transportation mechanism in getting involved. There is also a release at a specific time. So now we looked at delivery in kind of a general sense. Let's look at the meaning of a drug. You might know all what a drug means. You know the word, you know ibuprofen, you know paracetamol. Doxorubicin is an anti-cancer drug commonly used and commonly prescribed to treat cancer. So a drug is a molecule that is actually capable um, of interacting with biological component to give you a response. Whether this response is to treat your headache, or whether this response is to treat someone's cancer, that's what you want. However, what you also want for a drug is actually to be specific and that's mainly because you don't want side effects that's very important when you're talking about cancer patients um, as we discussed uh, earlier on so in nanomedicine drug delivery we, if we take those together what we're trying to do is to, um, to have a drug a drug can be any molecule um, or a group of molecule that we wish to deliver we want to deliver it um, at some specific site in the body, example the tumor, and for a therapeutic we want to get a therapy out of it or we want to diagnose, so we want to diagnose and to see where the cancer is in the body, or to actually achieve theranostic application. Something which is very interesting about nanomedicine drug delivery is that you actually can do the, the two things together. You can actually um, do a diagnostic, deliver a diagnostic, at the same time you can deliver your drug. So again, if we take what we have in nanomedicine drug delivery, is that drug molecules are actually packaged, um, transported, and released at a specific time and a specific site. So if we take these, uh, the orange dots here are your drug, we actually have in here a package, and when you're injected it in a human body, for instance, you actually want your drug only to get into the tumor site, here shown in grey. Yeah, so you want that specific specificity as well. So the packaging um, by which a drug is actually delivered to the disease site is as important as the drug itself. It's not only the drug that we care about. We want also to care about how is it packaged, how does it deliver your drug. So, and the way we do that is actually by using uh, what we know as drug delivery systems. In the nanomedicine, in the nano world, we actually use nanomaterials as our drug delivery systems, and we also call them nanovectors. So why do we use a drug delivery system in general? So I'll kind of highlighted, we want basically to deliver a therapeutic molecule, a diagnostic molecule, um, um, to their site of action. We want to encapsulate a drug inside um, our drug delivery system. So for instance, here we have carbon nanotube and we have a radioisotope that we want to deliver to treat cancer, or you actually can um, conjugate your drug, in this case a methotrexate, another anti-cancer drug that you want to deliver specifically to the tumor site. We also want to use it to um, we want also to use it to reduce um, side effect again. If you want, um, if you want it to be uh, specific and targeted, that's what will happen. You actually reduce side effect. You also can reduce drug resistance. And also um, with chemistry, a lot of the molecules that chemists are making are actually quite potent. However, may, one of the main problems is their solubility. Or another problem that um, Yusuf mentioned previously is that they can't get into the cells. So you actually can use drug delivery system and you can use na nanomaterials to deliver those drugs in inside your cell. By doing so, you're actually altering how the drug is distributed in the body. So you're actually enhancing its specificity to the site of action, if we think about cancer, or enhancing its targeting. So in what we do, um, or what we do um, uh, in nanomedicine again, is we try to explore the use of nanomaterials in, med um, in medicine. So my lab, for instance, we're concentrating on um, using nanomaterial for cancer therapy, again, to achieve targeted and specific delivery. We also concentrate on your degenerative disorders. One of the main problems as well is getting drugs into the brain. So nanomaterials have shown exciting um, um, uh, results that they can actually, some of them can cross the blood brain barrier and more work is actually being um, done to look at um, uh, neurodegenerative disorders like Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease. We also use nanomaterial for imaging and diagnosis. As you can see here, this is the mice and we can actually see the view, the liver, um, be, um, uh, using radioactivity or a drug of radioactive material encapsulated inside nanotubes. And interestingly enough, we also look at nanotoxicology. You will hear that nano is actually... Um, we, you will hear the word um, that nano is actually um, toxic, but 
that's also have a side and um, a, a side to it the, to the story. So we actually look at whether this nanomaterial that we're using is toxic, and what we try to do as well is try to engineer it to make it non-toxic by functionalizing it by involving chemists into the the, the, um, the game, if I say that. So the beauty of nanomedicine is that it's an interface between different fields. It's an interface between chemistry, it's an interface between engineering, between biology and pharmacology. So in nanomedicine, we actually go from looking at um, um, uh, molecules and drugs and conjugating them to nanomaterials into in vitro cell work, into in vivo animal experiments, basically. So that's again just to highlight and that's just kind of an overview of some of the papers or some of the graphical abstracts from the papers um, that uh, was involved with and some also of um, um, kind of covers of the articles or the journals that the research was highlighted. Thank you for your attention and I will be happy to take any questions. Thank you very much. And it's time for three questions please. Yes. Are there any restrictions to drug size that can be um, incorporated in nanoparticle or any other sort of chemical restrictions? Uh, no, there's no. Basically, you can deliver from small molecules onto cancer drugs, very small molecules to actually macromolecules, proteins, peptides, and um, um, uh, DNA, for instance, and DNA and small interference RNA. So there is uh, no uh, restriction in terms of what size you can uh, you can actually achieve. And there is a lot of work actually that has been doing done on gene therapy, where a DNA material is actually being delivered using nanomaterial and uh, drug delivery systems. Um, I'm more interested in the nanomaterial itself. Mm. So it helps you, it helps the drug target the site where it wants to go. Exactly. Okay, so um, if you think, if we think about, if we t I'll take give you an example about cancer, for instance. Um, cancer um, structure or cancer cells or the, the morphology is actually leaky. You've got leaky vasculature. So the nanomaterials, it's you got kind of get about 200 nanometer diameter between the blood vessels. So it's completely different structure from the normal um, blood vessels. So you, we use that to actually enhance. So we use the nanomaterial and you know, we use those characteristics to enhance and to get the drug. We can also, what we also do is actually add a targeting ligand as well. So we target it with antibodies as well to make it even more specific. So we've got a platform. So we're using the nanomaterial as a platform where you're actually putting a drug, putting um, uh, um, uh, an antibody for instance, a targeting ligand, using the properties of the nanoparticles to actually target the tumor. There's also other work for instance with carbon nanotube that they actually can absorb um, light and they can heat up. So they can actually do um, cause what we call high Hypothermia, so they can they just kill the cells um, by um, heating up. So again, and some other uh, nanop nanoparticles do have that characteristic. So again, there are certain intrinsic characteristic of nanoparticles that we can use um, uh, in our advantages, basically. Yes. yes. Out of interest, can they also be used externally as in topically as well? Uh, there are, yeah, there are some uh, work that has been done. You mean in kind of um, in uh, uh, creams? Yes, there are. In fact, if um, some of the creams actually do have uh, nano materials on them already, so it it will be. Um, if you look at some, you can actually find out that some are uh, with nano materials, and then the problem is started whether they are actually toxic or not, and it opens up a big issue. So yes, you can potentially. They have certain nanotube, for instance, can also get into the cells or cross the blast membrane without going into endocytosis, so it goes um, cell penetration straight away. So there are advantages that we can also use for, uh, for instance, skin delivery, if you're interested in that. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you.